Good morning. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn with me in the authorized version of the scriptures to Psalm 78. I'm going to start out with one verse, just one verse here, Psalm 78. Psalm 78. Verse 22. Because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. Because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. And trusted not in his salvation. There are many out there who believe. Many of them are, are people out there who believe. Just believe, remember? Many people, as it says in James chapter 2, verse 19, go there, please follow me along in your authorized version of the scriptures. Please follow me along. James chapter 2, verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe. And tremble. But what one God <laughs> do you believe in? Do you believe in one God that it consists of three persons? A person is a spirit, soul, and body. Or do you believe in the God who is, who, who is comprised of spirit, soul, and body? John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verses 23, on to verse 24. John chapter 8, verses 23, on to verse 24. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins, for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. I am he. Meaning, God the Father. Unless you believe God is one God, consisting of spirit, soul, and body. Many out there believe. They just believe. What God do you believe in? What God do you believe on, I should say? But see, when you go back to Psalm 78 now, go back to Psalm 78, verse 22. Because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. See, when you believe in a God that is one God comprised of three persons, which is something the scriptures do not teach, you're not believing on the true God of the scriptures. Hence, you are not trusting on his salvation. You're trusting on your own salvation because you just believe. You're a thief and a robber and you go up, the other, uh, you go up some other way. Now, you go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Verses 41 on to verse 47. See, those who believe in the Trinity do not believe on the true God of the Scriptures, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Father. Spirit, soul, and body. The Godhead is spirit, soul, and body, okay? No, they believe in the Catholic God. One God consisting of three persons, three divine persons. A person is the spirit, soul, and body, okay? John chapter 8, verses 41 on to verse 47. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. 
when you say to a, a Trinitarian that you believe as the scriptures teach that Jesus is the Father, how does a Trinitarian react? <laughs> Jesus is not the Father! They get really rabid about it. So, what God do you believe in? The God of the scriptures, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father? Or the second place God of the three person Trinity? Which one do you believe in? A person is a spirit, soul, and body. Three persons that make one God that's insane, that makes no logical sense, none whatsoever. What God do you believe in? Verse 44 in John chapter 8 on to verse 47. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Why? Because uh, <laughs> all their little pet doctrines were kicked. Their um, glorification of themselves, their flesh, was being annihilated. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. See, we as the Church of the Living God, when we are out there amongst the lost, we are ambassadors. And a lot of the time, what ends up happening by the way we live, by the way we present ourselves, by the way we adhere our lives unto the scriptures amongst the lost, in whatever situation it is, that is usually the way we testify and give testimony unto the lost. But when the Lord orchestrates a uh, situation where we get to speak to them uh, through the scriptures, the Lord leading us uh, through the scriptures to speak unto someone, or orchestrating a circumstance, a uh, situation, um, if God is leading that person onto the truth, they will hear. See, a lost person, the Lord can get a hold of a lost person and have them to hear what is being said to them. Because why? Their heart is being pricked. Okay? That's how that works. God is leading that person who is genuinely in the path of being broken of their self-righteousness. Hence, they will hear. But someone who is in their pride, who wants not to hear, who doesn't want to hear the truth, who doesn't want to believe the truth, or doesn't want to repent of themselves. Ye are of your father the devil. And see, unlike what Calvinists teach, God is a God who chooses. God in his infinite power, he's so powerful that he gave his own creation the ability to choose. Now that does not mean we save ourselves in the wise. God is the one who does the saving. It is by grace through faith in this dispensation. Absolutely it is. Absolutely it is. But see, God is a God who chooses. God is a God who chooses. And hence, he has given to, unto us, his creation, the ability to choose. Because, as you reminded me, brother, as I always say, God doesn't hold a gun at your head forcing you to be saved, unlike what John Calvin taught you. Nor is the devil forcing you at gunpoint to disobey or not to um, come to him on his terms. No, 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 it doesn't work like that. No. We have free will. 
God is a God who chooses. And because God is a God who chooses, he has given unto us the ability to choose. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Verses 15 on to verse 20. We're going to look a little at this. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 15. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Verses 15 on to verse 20. You've got to remember this is for our instruction in righteousness. But this is showing us that God is a God of choice. God chooses whom and what. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 15 on to verse 20. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil, and that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart... Hmm. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou go, passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. Choose life. Under a dispensation where eternal security wasn't there. Under a dispensation where it was faith and works. Hmm. Choose life. Therefore, choose life. Choose the Lord or choose to remain in your flesh. Choose to serve Satan and his ways, and his wiles. Hmm? Hmm. Interesting. I call heaven to, let's read that again. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Hmm. To give them. Choose life. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Go back. Deuteronomy chapter 7. So, the Lord has given the children of Israel in a different dispensation the ability to choose either life or death. Hmm. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 under verse 11. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Yes, God personally chose Israel, the Jew, okay, of Shem, the Hebrews of Shem, okay? He personally chose the Hebrews, which are stem from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There are others that are of Shem that are not Hebrews, okay? For example, the Chinese, the Japanese, they are descended of Shem, but they're not Hebrews. Because Hebrews, Hebrews being Hebraic, is derived from the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See? Okay? You get, you're with me so far? So the Lord chose that. He chose the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Even though, even though there were of Shem, 
different kindreds, but yet all of Shem, you see? He chose that specific thing, that specific line that began with Abraham, okay? God chose that way. God chose that way, okay? The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. God's a God of the little guy, okay? That's greatly recorded within scripture, okay? God is a God of the little guy, okay? Remember, Catholics tell you if Christ had a church, it would be the biggest one. No, <laughs> no, no. Uh, the Church of the Living God, Christ's true church, is very small. Very, very small. Very small. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. And remember, there are many people out there that believe in Jesus. Oh, the Christians out there in abundance, they believe in Jesus. <laughs> Just believe. What Jesus are you believing in? Hmm? Which one? The one who is, who is spirit, soul, and body, God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, or the second member, the second person of a satanic three-person trinity? Hmm. But because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, his, their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? The line of the Hebrew which God chose, see? Hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now, therefore, the Lord, know, therefore, that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. And repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Look at verse 10. And repayeth them that hate him to their face. You know, in this dispensation, God died on the cross. He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He shed his blood on the cross to make an atonement for your sin, okay? And you come to him on his terms, being broken of your self-righteousness, having godly sorrow, contrition, and in fear of the Lord, you call upon his name and that he may save you, okay? It's a lot more simple than a lot of people like to make it out to be, okay? But he has, that, he has extended that hand onto all people. Not everybody is going to go to him though. Why? Because there are those out there who do not want who want to be in their pride. They're not broken of their self-righteousness. And see, when you deny what the Lord has offered you, even has called you to, but you deny, because remember, brother, like you told me, he's not holding a gun at your head. He's not forcing you to do anything. You reject that, okay, and repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Today in this dispensation, that is known as being a child of disobedience, children of wrath, okay? You reject the true gospel even one time. God's love is not for you because God's love is at Calvary. God's wrath is for you, okay? that mean, What does that mean? Uh, you hate the Lord because you reject what he did for you on the cross. Uh, he hates you. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. See, the Christians, they want you to believe that God loves you no matter what, even though you hate him. Okay? Even though you hate him. And especially if you've heard the true gospel and you reject that. Oh, yeah. God's wrath is for you. Yeah. God's love is not for you. See, but the Christians want you to believe that God loves you unconditionally, which is not true, my friend. 
But look at this, verse 7. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you were more in number than any people for ye were the fewest of all people because God's got a little guy. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 now. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. First Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 31. See, God in, under the law, God in the Old Testament chose from Shem, he chose from Shem, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He chose that line, okay? Remember, there were others that came and descended from Shem, but God chose Abraham, which was descended of Shem, okay? God chose that way, just like today in this dispensation. God chose the way of the cross. He chose that way. I uh, did a video on this, uh, which was based upon refuting Calvinism. We're going to talk a little bit more about that today, and I'll remember to put the link for that, uh, for that in the description box. But God, where in the Old Testament, God chose the Hebrew, the line from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He chose that of Shem. Today, in this dispensation, 1 Corinthians chapter 18, verses, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 31. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness but unto us which are saved. It is the power of God. See, you have a Bible. It says, are being saved. Well, the scriptures say, you are saved if you come to him on his terms, okay? But the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Foolishness. And the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So to live foolishly or to be in foolishness is to do things as though there is no God. And that's something. And that's something. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, wise in this world, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. God, the Father, the creator of everything, heaven and earth, God manifest in the flesh, dying on a cross, shedding his blood to make atonement for sin. And there's nothing you can do to save yourself. You just come to him on his terms in repentance, you know, repenting of your self-righteousness. See, it, it sounds too good to be true, right? But it is true. The hard part is for you getting over your self-righteousness, your pride, and coming to him broken, and having godly sorrow, and calling upon his name in fear of him. Okay? So many people dispute that. Okay? Why? Because they're wise. Oh, and they're prudent. When in scripture you see being wise is usually being attributed unto those who fear the Lord. And true prudence is a result of, number one, fearing the Lord, which is wisdom, and to depart from evil, which is understanding, is derived, prudence is derived from understanding, which is departing from evil. Where is the wise? Where are those false gods? Where are all those men that you put your stock into? Where are they? Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? How do you do that? By the cross. Very simple. Very beautiful. But see, the world doesn't like that. Why? Because it removes all of you out of it. 
removes all of you out of it. See, that's why easy believism is so satanic, because it's you saving you because of you just believing, because they like to skip over all the nitty-gritty important stuff that is required for our Lord to save you. Not only do they neglect it, they attack it. But it says, Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Educated beyond your own intelligence. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Foolishness of preaching? Yeah, that's what the world says unto us who are called to do this, who are called to preach. The world calls it foolishness. And how will they hear unless... One is sent unto them. Hmm? I hold your place here. Go to Romans chapter 10. Okay? Go to Romans chapter 10. <laughs> oh, go on. I beg your pardon. Romans chapter 10. Verse 14. Under verse 17. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Wait, 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 wait. wait. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Verse 20 in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Where's the wise? Where's the scribe? Where's the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Go back to Romans chapter 10. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by your feelings. So faith, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The word of God. For after the wisdom of God, back in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21, For after that and the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. Onto the Jews a stumbling block. That, how can that be God on the cross? And unto the Greeks, foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Note that it says, not many wise men after the flesh, after the flesh that have all their stock and whatnot in the flesh. Yeah. Right. Why? Why is it not many mighty? Not, why is it how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called? Why? Because it says, after the flesh, still in their flesh. See, 
mighty, wise, noble people. Those who have a lot of things. See, this is why he is the God of the little guy. Um, those, it's not impossible. But those who have the best things of this life have a lot harder time coming to the Lord broken of themselves and realizing that all their stuff is done. They have a lot more to be tempted with than those of us who are dependent upon the Lord. Back to that thing about being self-sufficient. But rather we ought to be Christ dependency. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, the wise in this world. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. The weak things, the little things, to confound the mighty. The church of the living God, really small. The Roman Catholic Church, bloop, bigger than anything. And all her daughters, see. And base things of the world, and things which are despised, hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. Why? That no flesh should glory in his presence. And see, when you... When you just believe, dear, dear friend, dear friend, when you just believe, what are you doing? That no flesh should glory in his presence. I've seen it. I've encountered it. Okay? I, I say because I believed. You're glorying in yourself. You're glorying in your flesh. You're glorying in yourself. I am saved. Because I just believed. How are you saved, Brad? By his grace through faith. Okay? I had nothing to do with my salvation. As he was breaking me, calling me, okay? I could have rejected. Yes, I could. Because God's not holding me, wasn't holding me at gunpoint to come to him. And Satan wasn't holding a gun to my head to reject either. Okay? But see, when God called me to himself while he was breaking me, see, that's why repenting of your self-righteousness is so important. Because you come to him with nothing. You can't, what can you go to God with? Huh? It's like these people that uh, who harp to this, well, God loved me enough to die for me. So that must mean I'm worth something. You're worth nothing. I'm worth nothing. God loved, past tense. God gave, past tense. God has every right to obliterate every single thing that you see outside your door. Every single thing. Everything. Okay? Everything. Even you. And you have nothing to offer him. And see, it is by his grace. Grace comes first. And your response to that grace, coming to him on his terms, broken, and having godly sorrow, your response is faith in what he has done. While in the Old Testament, it was what he was going to do. See. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, fear of the Lord, and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, and this is uh, basically a quote from Jeremiah, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. You easy believism guys, what do you glory in? You glory in your belief. 
You glory in your belief. Yes, a blue, uh, hello, belief is imperative to being saved by our Lord Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Okay? But it is by grace, through faith. Okay? It is his grace that saves you. And your response to that grace is your faith in what he has done. Not in the fact that you merely believe. See, you're making yourself your own idol. You are glorying in your flesh because you saved yourself by what you did. Now go to Joshua chapter 24. Go to Joshua chapter 24. God chose the cross from the beginning. He chose the cross. It wasn't revealed until Paul because they were not looking forward to the cross, the disciples and whatnot, the apostles, they were not looking forward to the cross, okay? That was revealed to Paul after the death, burial, and resurrection, okay? Covered that before in several videos, okay? But God is a God who chooses, okay? God's the one who chooses you because he does know your heart. Yes, he does. Is your heart broken because of your self-righteousness? Is your heart broken? destroyed because it's your fault that he died you're the one who put him on the cross you're the one that held the hammer you're the one who put the crown of thorns on his head you're the one who whipped him it's you okay it's personal see speaking in generalities adds you to the number is something you ought not to do. Go to Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 on to verse 15. Now therefore, fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, Choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So you have a choice. God calls you, not by force. Satan wants you to reject, not by force, but God calls you. He's not going to forcibly take you and pull you to him. It doesn't work like that, okay? You have to, all you have to do is follow his lead. But see, that takes humility. That takes brokenness. See, a God who chooses who chose the line of the Hebrew, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, from whence the Hebrews came. Because remember, Hebrew is first attributed unto Abraham. Okay? So that line of Shem, which God chose, the way of the cross, which God chose, God is a God who chooses. So hence, in his creation, who are created in his image, spirit, soul, body, he gives unto us choice. Because God doesn't want a robot. If you were a robot, then your love would be fake. It would be implanted. God wants you to willingly love him. He does. And since he created you, he has every right to be jealous for your love. See, and a lot of lost people can't understand that. Now, go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. I also want to thank the beloved brother who um, your email makes sense to me now. You know who you are. It makes sense. Bless your heart and soul, dear brother. I love you and we're praying for you every day. But 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 22 under verse 26. Flee also youthful lusts. 
but follow after righteousness. But follow, excuse me, righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish, foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. Foolish. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. Living foolish, doing things foolish, living as there is no God. Okay? And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Oppose themselves. How do you oppose yourself? By rejecting what God has offered you. By rejecting the truth. Well, wanting to be a thief and a robber, climb up some other way so that you may glorify yourself. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. The snare of the devil. What is the snare of the devil? God loves everybody unconditionally. Save yourself by your own belief. Repent of all your sins and then go to the Lord that he might give you repentance. See, you were, and you're rejecting and you're choosing to not believe the truth of the gospel. You are opposing yourself. You're caught in the snare of the devil. See, remember the devil, one of the things that he was all about was what? He wants to be like God. He will be like the Most High. And then you hear people talk about imitating Christ. Okay? Which you can't do. Because, number one, Christ is God the Father. He did not sin. He raised people from the dead. He did miracles, which you and I cannot do. Okay? <laughs> but being taken by that snare of the devil, that you can save yourself. See, only God can save you. And when you take upon yourself that you save yourself by your own belief, just believe, were you God? Huh? Huh? Now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. What does that mean? To know who was truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Okay? That's what that means. Christ crucified within you. I am crucified unto this world. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. Christ liveth within me. That's Galatians chapter 2, verses 20 on to verse 21. Go look it up. Okay? So when he says... For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Are you crucified unto the world? Does Christ live within you? That's what Paul is talking about. Okay, let's continue. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Paul wasn't a professional. Paul wasn't following a man. He wasn't a Rachmanite. Okay. No, he was in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. He was an undersized man, nothing to look at, just like our Lord was nothing to look at. But you, you look so pretty, huh? Yeah, yeah. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. In the past, when you were listening to, when I listened to P 
people who were calling themselves preachers that you had to get a dictionary out just to follow them along because they were using all these big scholarly words. Eh. Eh. No. 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 That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. <laughs> And what does he say in 1 Corinthians chapter 1? Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. <laughs> and what is it uh, in verse 20 in 1 Corinthians chapter 1? Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Verse 6 in 2 Cor uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, not sinlessly perfect. A perfect heart is a heart that, number one, belongs to God, a heart that has been broken, a heart that has the fear of the Lord, a heart that has godly sorrow. Okay? A perfect heart is one that belongs to God, that has been broken of self-righteousness, that has godly sorrow, beg your pardon, and the fear of the Lord. Okay? That's what a perfect heart is. Okay? And because you are broken of your self-righteousness, and because you have godly sorrow, because in fear of the Lord you call upon the name of the Lord, you love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Why? Because he's all you got. There's nothing in you there's nothing in you. There is no good thing in your flesh. Nothing. 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 It's only the Lord. And again, okay, you save yourself by your own belief, you're glorifying yourself. God loves me unconditionally, you're glorifying yourself. I got to repent of all my sin. Then the Lord gives me repent. You're glorifying yourself. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. And who is the prince of the power of the air? Who is the prince of this world? That be Lucifer, son of the morning, not morning star, blasphemy. Son of the morning, okay? Meaning he's a created being, okay? But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Why is it hidden? Because people are in their flesh. They're in their pride, okay? It's, salvation has been made plain. It's very easy to see, but see, People want to glorify themselves, brother. They want to live in their flesh. The absurdity of the cross, the simplicity of it. But also, unto most, the impossibility of repentance of their self-righteousness. which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For well, what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Okay? No, the Spirit of man which is in him, and the Spirit of God, capital S. Okay? Spirit of man, that old man, that Adamic nature, okay? That disobeyed. In the Garden of Eden. See, that's inherent in all of us. Okay? And it's been relegated to the skin suit, the flesh. Okay? 
That's why all flesh is sinful. Okay? But see, the spirit of man, when you think about it, is actually the spirit of this world. Because from whence came man? Man came from dust. Man came from the dirt. Didn't he? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. So the spirit of man is actually the spirit of this world. When you think about it, man's spirit that's in him versus the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Hmm. For what man knoweth the things of man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual Spiritual, meaning you have the Spirit of God within you. Spiritual, the authorized version of the Scriptures. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual <gasps> judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Why is that? Because we have that circumcision made without hands. And see, the natural man, what does that say? But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. The natural man, Spirit of man, Spirit of this world, of this world. And the little G God of this world is Satan. And if Satan can get someone to think they're saved, to think they're religious, to be a Christian, but yet they're saving themselves by what they themselves do and that it's not of the Lord himself. Okay? Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I've noticed a lot of people. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 4. It seems to me that a lot of people like to just quote verses 3 and 4. But they leave out, like to leave out verses 1 and 2. Why is that? I'll show you. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, defines what the gospel is for us today in this dispensation. Okay? But, moreover, brethren, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1, on to verse 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you. Now, see, keeping in memory does not mean that you're saving yourself, meaning that it's stuck. That when the Lord, through the scriptures, through someone of the church of the living God, has confronted you, you're not good, you're going to hell unless you repent of your self righteousness. Okay? Did it stick? See, people don't want to hear that. And when people don't want to hear that, they go outside of Scripture. They go outside of what God has said. They go to Christians. They go to easy believism. They go to the love gospel. They even go to Lordship Salvation. Okay? But see, what does that produce? Because like I said in the previous video, all of that circles around self. Okay? But what does this mean? 
by which also ye are saved if ye keep in memory that if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Vain belief, which ought to be what we refer to these easy believism heretics as vain believers. You mean someone can believe in vain? Yeah. Yeah, uh, go to Psalm 39. Psalm 39. Not 89. Thank you, pardon. Psalm 39. Psalm 39. Verses 4 under verse 6. <clears throat> Remember, you save yourself by your own belief. God loves you unconditionally. You, you got to repent and then go to the Lord. Psalm 39, verses 4 under verse 6. Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days what it is, that I may know how frail I am and how frail we are, how truly frail we are. See, how frail are you if you save yourself by your own belief, dear friend? Behold, thou hast made my days as an hand breadth, and mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Surely every man walketh in a vain shoe. Surely they are disquieted in vain. Disquieted in vain. Your quietness is disrupted. You know, you endure for a while until temptation come or persecution come because of the word and then by and by you are offended and you revert back to the world. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. What we're focusing on here is... Verily, every man in his best state is altogether vanity, shila. So, someone who believes in vain, and it mentions here about, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you. Now, that doesn't talk about conditional security in this dispensation. Absolutely not. Did it stick? Okay. Were you pricked in your heart? Or were you cut? Okay. Those who were pricked in their heart in Acts chapter 2, what must we do to be saved? Those who are cut in their heart in the book of Acts always gnashed on people with their teeth. See, the gospel that is preached is going to produce one of two things, a pricking in your heart or a cutting of your heart. And a pricking in your heart will lead you. It's like, Lord, I'm nothing. A cutting in your heart. And that's when you go to go up some other way. That's when you go outside of Scripture. Why is that? Because man, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, verily, every man in his best state is altogether vanity. And also too, also too, also too. Okay. Jeremiah 17. Oh, of course we had to go here. Of course, Jeremiah 17. Verses 5 on to verse 10. Jeremiah 17, verses 5 on to verse 10. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. And something you do. And maketh flesh. Maketh flesh. You know. The Eucharist. Maketh flesh his arm. And whose heart. Departeth from the Lord. Save yourself by your own belief. God loves everybody unconditionally. You got to repent of your sins. Before God saves you. Easy believism. The love gospel. Lordship salvation. 
For he shall be like a heath, the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord. That trusteth in the Lord. And whose hope the Lord is. Whose hope the Lord is. The Lord himself is our salvation. Jesus Christ, God our Father, is our salvation. Okay? He is the resurrection. You know, come up hither. The catching away of the church of the, living, of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Church of the living God. You know, in, inaccurately referred to as Christians. Okay? Blessed is, is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when he cometh. But her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So see, someone believing in vain, number one, it didn't stick. And number two, vain belief is based off of what? Vanity. And what is vain? Man. What is man? Dirt. Flesh. Do you get it? For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Very simple. And that he shed his blood on the cross to make an atonement for our sins. That's very simple. That's very simple. But see, that you have nothing to do with it. You have nothing to do with it. The only thing is that the scriptures rebukes you, cuts you, okay, pricks your heart, I should say, excuse me. What you do is have faith on what he has done. You come to him a broken mess of your self-righteousness. But see, if you believe in vain, there's still that self-righteousness there because you can save yourself by what you do, by your belief, or that the fact that there's something good in your flesh because God loves everybody unconditionally, right? Or because you gave this up and now you're ready to go to the Lord for him to be saved. That's what vain belief is. When in reality, you have nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. Your only thing you can do is have faith on him, what he has done. But see, you arrive at that faith through true brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord. And in the fear of the Lord, you will call upon the name of the Lord. And let's remember, brethren, about vain belief. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16. Had to include this. 1 Samuel chapter 16 Verses 6 on to verse 7. And it came to pass, when they were come, that he looked on Iliad. And now, backstory. Uh, God, through Samuel, was going to anoint King David. And he goes to Jesse, and all his sons are passing before him and stuff like that. But David was out there with the, the sheep and stuff like that. Backstory, okay? And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance. Remember, countenance is the body. Or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Yes, God does know your heart. 
Is it broken? Is it contrite? Is it afraid of him? Yes, God knows your heart. But is your heart perfect with him? Broken of your self-righteousness, godly sorrow, fear of the Lord. Is that in your heart? If it isn't, then guess what? Your heart's not perfect with the Lord. You can't have a perfect heart. You can't be perfect because your spirit and soul are housed within the skin suit, the flesh. Okay, You cannot be sinlessly perfect, but your heart can be. Your heart can be perfect toward the Lord. Oh, absolutely. Now go to John chapter 15. John chapter 15, just one verse. John chapter 15, verse 16, just one verse. Okay, again. Now, right what we're about to read is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? But see, God saves you. Because God knows your heart. God knows if your heart is truly broken, if your heart is truly contrite, if you have fear of the Lord. If you have fear of the Lord, you're going to call upon the name of the Lord. It's that simple. Okay? God is the one who saves you. You don't save yourself. You have nothing to do with it. Okay? He breaks you through the scriptures. He destroys you through the scriptures. And result of being broken, you will have godly sorrow because it's your fault. You are the man. Okay? You're the man. Brethren, people, and see, when it happens in one moment, when you get that, you're going to be afraid of the Lord. Why? Because he, he can send you to hell and has every right to do so. You're going to stand before him. And what are you going to say to him? But remember, John 15, verse 16. Okay? This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. He is specifically talking about the apostles. Okay? Have I not chosen you twelve? And one of you is the devil? Okay? But the point is, God is the one who saves you. John 15, verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, see, that's who he's talking about, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Okay? Now, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. He's talking about the apostles. But the point that we're getting at is, God is the one who saves you. Okay? Yes, he knows your heart. Okay? It is his choice to save you. Okay? This, ha this has nothing to do with Calvinism, elect and non-elect. It's an issue of the heart. You can say, God knows my heart all day and all night. Is it broken? Are you broken of your self-righteousness? Huh? Do you have godly sorrow? It's your fault. <laughs> I know that's hard for a lot of you. But see, it's so many, brother, so many, so many people want to reject that. And still think that there's something good in themselves. That's, that's why the love gospel is so wicked. It, it, it gives a good pretense that, oh, they're trusting on God. No. What's the premise? There's something good in me that, God, that was worth God dying for. Hence, they puff up themselves. Have you ever read Romans chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 18, which the easy believism heretics like, uh, like to skip over? Now, go to Ephesians chapter 1, okay? Now, we cover this greatly in depth in that video that the Lord had me to do, debunking Calvinism, okay? We're going to lightly go over Like I said, I will remember to put that in the description box of this video, Okay? But, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 on to verse 14, okay? And like I said, we go through this in detail in the Calvinism video 
uh, elect or non-elect, okay? Scripture does not teach Calvinism. God chooses to save you if you've come to him on his terms, broken and contrite and in fear of the Lord. You go up some other way, you're not going according to his terms. Okay? God is not, listen to me, God is not going to choose you if you go away, uh, up another way than the way that he has chosen the way of the cross. Okay? you got to get that through your head. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 and verse 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. And uh, let me read that again. Beg your pardon. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. He hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. How did he do that? Because from the foundation of the world, before the foundation of the world, he knew it was going to happen. But he set in order. He set in order the way of the cross. See, again, you read Ephesians chapter 3. It wasn't revealed until Paul. Okay? But God chose, just like he chose Abraham, the Hebrew, the line of Abraham, he chose the way of the cross. God is a God who chooses. Okay? Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Predestinated us unto the adoption. Okay? When you come to the Lord on his terms, okay, he has predestinated the way of the cross. Okay? When you come the way of the cross on his terms, okay, the adoption of children by Christ, Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. He chose the way of the cross. Okay? We already looked at that in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Okay? Let's continue. To the praise of his glory, to the praise of the glory of his grace, his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. See, grace. God is a God who chooses. God chooses you. And if you come to him on his terms, may he save you. But if you want to go up some other way, not according to his terms, broken, contrite, and fear of the Lord, and in fear of the Lord, calling upon the name of the Lord, you're not going to him on his terms. You understand? In whom we have redemption through his blood. Not his flesh. Through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. God so loved... Aaron, you, you, you guys who love your John 3.16. John 3.16, okay? <laughs> John 3.16. You need to really read the context um, of, of John 3.16 from verses 12 on to verse 21. But John 3.16... For God so loved, past tense, the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, past tenses gave, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Okay? That was before the death, burial, and resurrection. Anyway, by the way, okay? Speaking on the Jews. Okay? But, in whom we have, the rede in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. See, wisdom and prudence attributed unto what? Salvation, fear of the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, that he would have all men to be saved, okay? According to his good pleasure, which he hath proposed in himself. 
that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, kingdom of heaven reign, being predestinated to the purpose of being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. See, when the Lord saves you, you are predestinated to reign with Christ. That's what that's talking about. That's what the predestinated is talking about. Again, we get into this in great detail in the one video about Calvinism, which I will link in the description box, okay? That we should be the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Now, eternal security. When you come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, call upon the name of the Lord, and he saves you because your heart is perfect with him, okay? In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, repentance towards God, faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, that he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He shed his blood on the cross to atone for your sins, okay? The gospel of your salvation in whom also after that ye believed. What are you believing? That God saves you. That what he did on that cross and the blood that he shed saves you. That it is him himself, God himself. Okay? You are, your belief is on Jesus Christ. On the man. On Jesus Christ. See, believing in your belief, that's metaphysical mind science. Okay? What? That's faith in faith. Okay? You don't have faith in your faith. You have your faith on Jesus Christ. What are you believing in? What are you believing on? You're believing in what he has done. You're believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. You're believing on Jesus Christ. See, you're saved by your own belief. You're having faith on your faith. You're believing on your faith. God loves you unconditionally. You're believing on yourself. Okay? Not your, not your faith. You're believing that you're good, even though the scriptures say you're not good. Okay? Lordship salvation. Well, I've repented of this, this, and this. Now I can come to the Lord you're believing in your works. See, belief, dear friend, is on Jesus Christ. You believe in what he has done. Yes. But see, in believing in what he has done, you are believing on him. Not you. In whom ye also trusted, you trust what he did was sufficient, of course. You trust his word that you believe on him. He's going to take you to heaven that you're forgiven. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Once saved, always saved. You come to the Lord on his terms, his conditions, he saves you, you are eternally secure. You're sealed. You're going to heaven. Okay? Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption, the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Getting out of here before the time of Jacob's trouble, see? It's very simple. It's very simple. Okay? Very simple. But go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. One verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 12. But see, there are those out there who glory in their what? 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 12. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance and not in heart. 
You look the part, but are you the part? You've put away certain things in your life, but is that you doing it or the conviction of our Lord Jesus Christ? Put that away, put that away. If you don't, I want to hurt you. The easy believism heretic, the love gospel heretic, the Lordship salvation heretic. Again, like in the previous video, it all circles around you. You glory in your appearance. You do. You glory in your appearance. And 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves And you see this with the easy believism heretic. When the Lord confronts them with Romans chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 18. And sooner or later comes around about, well, I'm not as bad as so and so. <laughs> see, we compare ourselves to others. We're not wise. Ruckman once said, but if you're going to compare yourself to someone, pick yourself a good one. Yeah, perfect wisdom of men right there. Yeah. Yeah. Paul is our example. Paul is our example. How do we measure up to Paul? Who was the greatest of the church of the living God? Every single one of us fails miserably. Even you, hotshot. Even you. Of course, me. But see, as God is a God of choice, who has given us a choice, we have to remember there are those for because they love their flesh, they love the praises of man. It's onto them foolishness. Of the if they're of uh, if they're Jewish, it's a stumbling block. Okay. There are some out there. You can present them the truth, but they just won't. It doesn't take. Why? Second Corinth, uh, Second Thessalonians chapter two, verses ten on to verse seventeen. And with all deceivable in this. On to verse 17. And with all the deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Do you love the truth? You know, you're supposed to love the truth when God tells you that there is none righteous, no, not one, that your mouth is an open sepulcher, that you deserve to go to hell. Do you receive the love of the truth? Do you love that fact that, yes, God has called you out as worthless, useless, destined to go to hell unless he have his grace upon you, that he saves you by grace through faith? But no, see, there's that little inkling in them, that little inkling in them that wants to hold on. My mother, for example, she heard the true gospel, but she could not get over that there was none good, no, not one, that no one does good, that there is no such thing as a good person. My mother could not get past that. Like so many of them. They can do good by what they actually do, and that makes them a good person. No different. No, no, no. Let's continue. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. I'm saved by my own belief. I'm not saved by works. I'm saved because I just believe. God loves everybody. God loved me. 
God, there was something good in me enough for God to die for me. God loves everybody. Everybody's going to be saved. If I go ahead and put this away, if I put this away, if I don't do this anymore, don't do this, then I can come to the Lord and he'll save me. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That you can save yourself. That you are your own God. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Pleasure in unrighteousness. Misery loves company. And what is that in uh, Romans chapter 1? What is that in Romans chapter 1? Verse 32. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You have pleasure in unrighteousness. Your salvation has nothing to do with you. It's not your salvation. What did we begin this video with? Huh? 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 Psalm 78, Psalm 78, verse 22. Because they believed not in God, the true God of the scriptures, and trusted not in his salvation. No, it's your salvation because you just believe. God loves everybody. There is some, something good in you. and you're, That means you're good enough, right? Or because you put this away, this away, yeah, you trust not in his salvation. You trust in yourself. You made flesh your arm, dear friend. But let's continue. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. See, belief of the truth ties in with the beginning, from the beginning, chosen you to salvation through sanctification. Salvation through sanctification. It doesn't mean that you're saving yourself. See, the easy believism heretic wants you to stay in sin. They want you to be comfortable in sin. God calls us on to sanctification, to mortification, to putting down the flesh, to live our lives in accordance with the scriptures. Okay? But see, the easy believism heretic wants you to stay in sin, wants your life to be unclean. That's why they always tell you when you're in sin, it doesn't affect your salvation because you just believe. See, it's based off of what you do. So if you do something like sin, living in sin, and refuse to give it up because you're saved by what you do, it doesn't affect your salvation because it's your salvation, not his. Do you get it? Do you get it? It's God's salvation. You can't lose what God has given to you because it's not yours to lose. It's his. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to obtaining to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why is that? Because of what? Because of what? But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Whereas up here in verse... Um, in verses 10 on verse 12, they receive not the love of the truth. They believe not the truth. Whereas those of us who are saved, obviously, we believe the truth. And he's called us. See, eternally secure unto the redemption of the purchased possession, our inheritance, okay? Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. The traditions, whether by word or our epistle. The traditions are not the traditions of the Roman Catholic Church. 
abstaining from all appearance from evil. Working with your hands. Working with your hands. Working for the Lord. Doing whatever. Okay? Those are the traditions. Not, tra not the traditions of men. Which go against the scripture. Okay? It defines right there in the verse what the traditions are. Whether by word or our epistle. The tradition. Okay? Not that found in the Roman Catholic Catechism. I'm sure. Let's continue. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God even our Father, one and the same, which hath loved us and hath given us under his everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Why in good word and work? Not that we're saving ourselves, but we are ambassadors for Christ. Okay? The good works come after salvation. He is... Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, verses nine on the, uh, 8 on the verse 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. Easy believism heretic. Love gospel heretic. Lordship salvation heretic. Okay. And that, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works. And those works are, that he's talking about, are the works of the law. Lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Workmanship, a new creature. Okay, a new creature. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Okay. All right, now, uh, where were we? Go to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, verses 22 under verse 29. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Jesus Christ is the Father. Okay? John chapter 14, people. Okay? So, who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. See, and what do Trinitarians do? Jesus Christ is not the Father. And they show the triangular thing of the Roman Catholic Trinity, okay? Which in some, it looks like the matrix of a woman. The ovaries and stuff like that. Very disgusting. The Trinity is disgusting, okay? Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Why is that? Because Jesus is the Father. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. What is he saying there? Let that therefore abide in you. You have an unction from the Holy One. See, the gospel, did it stick? Did it prick your heart or did it cut your heart? Huh? Did it prick your heart to where, oh, oh, what do I got to do to be saved? Or did it cut your heart like, hmm? which one did it do? Did it stick? Hmm? And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. Once saved, always saved. Eternal life. See, you're going to have eternal life. Is it going to be in hell? Or is it going to be with our Lord Jesus Christ? Which one is it going to be? Okay. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Yeah, seduce you. <laughs> God loves everybody. God's love is unconditional. Absurd. Okay. 
Repentance is a work. Only saved people can have godly sorrow. Calling upon the name of the Lord is a work. You got to give up your sins first before God will even consider you. Oh, but they're so sincere, aren't they? Yeah. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. This is talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The Lord is that Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the anointing, that seal. Okay? That's talking about your seal until the day of redemption. The Lord in you. Okay? But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. Because Christ is the anointed one. Christ. Okay? And ye need not that any man teach you. Why? Because the spirit of truth will lead you into all, will guide you into all truth. And the Lord is that spirit. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him. Because you can do nothing unless you abide in him. He is always with you. Yes, he is with you. But see, abiding in him, okay? Abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. And see right there. Right there, ashamed. Ashamed. You easy believism devils, you have no shame. Because what's your, your, your defensive action is, it doesn't, it doesn't affect my salvation. Being saved of our Lord Jesus Christ, but in heaven him being ashamed of you. You got in, but you're, for eternity the Lord is going to be ashamed of you? Hello? See, just that I get in, well, does our Lord's honor mean nothing to you? In heaven, you want our Lord to be ashamed of you for eternity? But see, that's what the easy believism heretic does. It doesn't affect your salvation. You shouldn't do that, but yet don't worry about it. They're not preaching the right gospel anyway. They're not preaching the true Jesus Christ to you anyway. But see, they know no shame. You easy believism devils know no shame, and you do anything to justify your sin. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be ashamed. Have the Lord look at you at the judgment seat of Christ. So just get in there and have the Lord's shame upon you for all eternity. Wow. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. And the born of him, being born again, having the Lord within you. And the Lord within you will guide you unto righteousness. And the one that does unrighteousness, you're letting your flesh get in the way. And you got to remember, it's repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? You repent of your self-righteousness. That's, that's, that's the hardest thing for a lot of you. And you have faith on our Lord Jesus Christ for what he has done, that it has paid for your sin, that you're forgiven, and you take him at his word that you are saved and you're going to heaven. You're trusting on him. Ultimately, you trust on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's very simple. But again, the hard part is you getting over yourself. That's the hard part. And there are those of you out there who have heard the truth. And you don't want anything to do with it. Because you still got pride in you. Your self-righteousness is still there. And yes, pride is there in every, uh, every one of the church of the living God. But see, we know and have accepted that we are not good. And it is our, it is our fault. It was my fault that he died. The Lord broke me of my self-righteousness. I'm not good. 
But see, sin has been relegated to the flesh. When the flesh rears up saying, well, Brad, you're good. You've done this. No. Those of you who reject the gospel. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 20 under verse 23. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools have no knowledge, and fools hate knowledge. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Knowledge comes from wisdom, and wisdom is what? The fear of the Lord, and uh, the, the part from evil is understanding. Okay. Turn you at my reproof. Turn. Repent. Okay. Repent of your self-righteousness. Are you a fool? Hmm? Uh, <laughs> salvation is there. The way of salvation has been made very plain. You just got to get over yourself. Turn you at my reproof. I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Okay? Different dispensation, instruction on righteousness, however. Okay? Instruction on righteousness. When the Lord saves you, he saves you and himself, he dwells within you. And the spirit of truth, what is that spirit? Will guide you into all truth. Because I have called... And ye refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. But ye have set at naught all my counsel, and with none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. The fear of man bringeth a snare. Yeah, why are you going to be afraid of a man who's going to die? The Lord said, you're afraid of that? You don't fear me? You're going to be afraid of that? When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Why? For that they hated knowledge and did not choose not choose the fear of the Lord. Again, God ain't holding a gun to your head. God is a God of choice. God chose Abraham, the line of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the Hebrew. God chose the cross. Okay? God has given us choice. Do you choose the fear of the Lord? And see, these people, why is he laughing, right? Why? Because at, at their heart, they haven't chosen the fear of the Lord. They go to the Lord because of circumstance. Okay? All this stuff is coming upon me, so I'm going to go to the Lord. But then once it's gone away, what happens? They revert back because they were never his to begin with. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. See, and there the easy believism. I'm saved just because I believe and yet continue living in sin. You're of the church of the living God and you're, you know, the Lord is um, reproving you, correcting you, and you're not going along with it. You're in deep trouble. He's going to kill you eventually. He's going to hand you over for the destruction of the flesh. Your life isn't going to mean anything for him. Or he's not going to use you. I mean, okay, yeah, he could still use you as a bad example. <laughs> and see, that's what the easy believism heretic wants to minimize. The cost. Isn't it? Isn't it? Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, 
and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Shall be quiet from fear of evil. Then Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 25 on to verse 28. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they hearken not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished, and is cut off from their mouth. See, today God's hand is outstretched, but it's not forced. You have choice. You don't save yourself. But see, God calls every single solitary one of you. But what do you do with that call? It hurts. And it's supposed to. Think about what he went through for, uh, for you. But see, you want to minimize that and climb up some other way. And some of these people, brother, they've made their choice. They've made their choice. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Remember, we're looking for instruction in righteousness. Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 on to verse 8. And see, so a lot of, especially these Christians, they put on a good front. They put on a good shoe. Okay? It's like a garment that they put on, the facade of devils. Okay? And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which, op uh, which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Vain repetition is not you asking the Lord for something again and again. It's hail Mary full of grapes. Blessed be the fruit of the loom. Okay? It's those repetitive prayers from Catholicism and stuff like that. That's what that's talking about. Okay? Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. So don't be a hypocrite. We're all hypocrites at some point. But see, showmanship. You can put on a good show. You can put on a good facade. But what happens when it's just you and the Lord alone? Hmm? What happens when it's you and the Lord alone? Uh, Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 on to verse 12. The time leading up to the time of Jacob's trouble, when men are lovers of their, of their own selves, who are worshipers of men, who will do anything to defend their little pet doctrines. <laughs> Want to defend paganism? Go ahead. Go ahead. Who's the one who's really causing division there, buddy boy? Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 on to verse 12. This is uh, for the death, burial, and resurrection, doctrinally, under the, under the law, still the Old Testament. This is a little instruction in righteousness, okay? which apparently instruction and in righteousness goes out the window when you want to justify your own pathetic little uh, wants and needs. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, 
The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylactic trees and enlarge the borders of their garments. Oh, they can put on a good show, can't they? And love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi, Pastor, Pastor. Yeah. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. Father, religious title, such as the Catholic priests. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Go to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. You see, brother... We all, have, we all have a choice, people. Again, God doesn't force us. Satan doesn't force us. Okay? God gives you himself. But see, the, the condition is you have to be broken of yourself. You have to get out of the way. He must, in, he must increase and you must decrease. And it's a different thing entirely. When you're witnessing to people outside, even here online, when they reject the truth. But what happens when it's your family? Like I said, my mother heard the true gospel. And she could not get past, there is, none, no, there is no one good, no, not one. She couldn't get past that. Not at all. It hurts even more when it comes from those within your family. But you got to remember, brother, brethren, those in your immediate family, have they made their choice? If they have chosen against Christ, Luke chapter 9, Verses 23 under verse 26. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. See, we of the church of the living God, we deny ourselves. We decrease that he may increase. But those who are given to the persuasion of easy believism, the love gospel, lordship salvation, or whatever other heresy there is under the sun. They're not denying themselves, obviously. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. This is what we have to remember. When our own family... When our own family, who has heard the gospel, have made that choice and have turned and rent you. And we have to remember a very painful truth, which is a beautiful truth, 
a glorious truth. Luke chapter 14, verse 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. He must increase, but we must decrease. God has to come first. Over your own wife, over your own husband, over your own son, over your own daughter. Christ must be first. That doesn't make it any less painful. No, of course it doesn't. But that's the way it has to be. God has to be first. And if your own family, again, has chosen this world, Pray for them. Weep for them. But we have to remember, brethren. We have got to remember. We are in the last days. The catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble is coming soon. When, we do not know. But it's coming. And we have to remember that. And we have to put Christ first. We have to put God, uh, Christ first. Because if they've made their choice. See, there are some out there that have made their choice and are serving Satan. There are some right there that have made out there who have made the choice who just don't want to hear. Maybe in time, who knows? Go to 1 Samuel chapter 2. We have to a good reminder of this. Now, our Lord says we have to love him. We are to love the Lord our God with all our heart and with all our soul and with all our strength. We are to love the Lord first over our own selves, over our family. Okay? Want to see if someone, something that happens to someone who doesn't? 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2. Verses 27 on to verse 30. This is about Eli. Eli. Before Samuel. Eli. And there came a man of God unto Eli and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Did I plainly appear, appear unto the house of thy father when, thy, when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon mine altar, to burn incense, to wear an ephod before me? And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? Wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice and at mine offering, which I have commanded to my habit, which I have commanded in my habitation? And honorest thy sons above me to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my people. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father shall walk before me forever. But now the Lord saith, be it far from me. For them that honor me, I will honor. And them that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. God has to come first. Even over those we love. And yes. Yes. We all have that choice. We have choice. We don't save ourselves. But what do you do with the truth that God has revealed to you? What do you do with that? And let's remember what it says in Micah. Micah chapter 7. Micah chapter 7. Micah 7 verses 1 on to verse 8. 
Woe is me, for I am as when they have gathered the summer fruits, as the great gleanings of the vintage. There is no cluster to eat. My soul desired the first ripe fruit. The good man is perished out of the earth, and there is none up upright among men. They all lie in wait for blood. They hunt every man his brother with a net, that they may do evil with both hands earnestly. The prince asketh, and, judge, and the judge asketh for a reward. And the great man, he uttereth his mischievous desire. So they wrap it up. The best of them is a briar. The most upright is sharper than a thorn hedge. The day of thy watchman and thy visitation cometh. Now shall be thy perplexity. Trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Your wife. For the son dishonoreth the father. The daughter riseth up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. And you, brother, sister, therefore will I look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy, when I fall. I shall arise when I sit in darkness. The Lord shall be a light unto me. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. One second, brethren. Sorry about that. Matthew chapter 10. 11 on to verse 23. And into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till ye go hence. Again, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. We're looking at this for instruction and in, in righteousness, okay? And, when, uh, and into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till ye go hence. And when ye come into an house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Again today, Someone hears the true gospel and reject it. They're a child of wrath. And at the great white throne of judgment, they're going to stand before the Lord and they're going to be told, my servant I sent unto you. They warned you and you rejected it. <laughs> It'll be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. And shake off the dust of your feet. Let it go. Go to the next one. If it's in your own house, got to let that go. I'm not even going to condescend to say unto any of you who are going through that, that I know what it's like, but you have to realize what's at stake, what's going on. And you have to let it go. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Again, talking about for what dispensation he's referring to. Not this dispensation. Uh, we don't have to endure to the end to be saved at all. We don't have to endure to the end of anything today. Not at all. Not at all. Okay. During the time of Jacob's trouble, you will. Remember, this is for instruction and in righteousness. 
But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man come. Go on to the next. Go on to the, land, the next. And let's also finish here with Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, verses 13 on to verse 15, 14. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both. shall fall into the ditch. Yeah. Both shall fall into the ditch. My dear brethren, God is a God who chooses. God chose in the Old Testament the line of Abraham, the line of the Hebrew, of Shem, he has chosen the cross, the way of the cross. And we as his creation, he has given us the ability to choose because he doesn't want a robot following him. He wants you. And it's painful. It's very painful when someone you love chooses the way of this world. But we have to remember who comes first. It's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this, uh, dear brethren. If you do watch this, thank you. Um, there's a brother whose own family has turned against him. You know who you are. Um, please pray for this brother from California who's just going through some incredible things. Please pray for him. Keep him in your prayers. Please keep him in your prayers. And please keep us in your prayers. And thank you so much to all of you at the Church of the Living God who support us, who help us, who pray for us. We pray that you may continue to do so because without you, we are, we are done. Thank you so much, brethren. We love you and we pray for so many of you. And we will see you in the next video.